We're looking for something that's right here. So why is it that we haven't found it? Think about how you look for physical objects. If you can't find something, you've lost something you've dropped. The first thing you do is try to figure out where you might have dropped it, and you go looking there. And if you can't find it, you've got two choices. One is to look in other places, and the other is to go back and look over the same places you have been looking, but to look more carefully. So it's the same with the meditation. We're looking right here in the present moment. And so one way of seeing more clearly, of course, is to look more carefully. You have to think about the quality of your attention that you're paying here right now. Think of when you're listening to a piece of music, and you're trying to listen for the inner voices, say, as when you're listening to Bach. You have to make yourself very quiet and try not to get disturbed or distracted by the, the outer voices. So it's the quality of the attention and also it's where you're focusing it. In essence, the question that you're asking. You're trying to make the mind very, very still. Make yourself very still. This is why we try to get the breath to calm down. One of the Buddha's very first instructions in the breath meditation, after you've been watching the breath for a while and trying to be aware of the whole body, that's trying to look around, then he says try to calm the breath. Because you may have found that if you're listening for something very subtle, say a noise that's far away, you make yourself quiet. And it's not just quieting the mind, there's also quieting the, the energy in the body so that you can hear more clearly. And the same principle applies here. You allow the breath to grow more quiet, more serene. The quieting, the word serene here, connects with a, one of the factors for awakening. You try to quiet down the movements of the breath, and you also try to quiet down the feelings and perceptions in the mind. In other words, figure out how you might conceive of the breath, how you might picture the breath to yourself to allow it to become more quiet and to allow the mind to become quieter too. As things grow more quiet, then you begin to see that, at least in the body, you begin to pick up on patterns of tension you missed earlier when the breath was coarser or more blatant, areas where you didn't look. That's the other part of finding something that you've been looking for, is looking in places you haven't looked before. Pose the question when you're focusing on the breath, which parts of the body get blocked out? The mind does have this tendency when it's focusing on one thing to block out other things. It creates blind spots. Where are your blind spots right now? And how will you notice your blind spots? John Swatman has made the comment that you, know, you want to look for ignorance, we'll look at where things are being fabricated. Right there is where you're going to find ignorance. So try to notice what's being fabricated and where is it hiding. This is one of the reasons why we try to create a whole body awareness. It gets us used to having that quality that the, the Buddha had in full, which was, as they say, the all-around eye, samanta jaku. You want to learn how to look all around and make those blind spots smaller and smaller, and then look into those blind spots if you can. You have to back into them sometimes. If you think of your metal vision pointing in one direction, well, you have to ask yourself, well, what's behind the eye of the mind? 
figure out some way of turning around looking in the, the back spots. And so part of it's making the mind more quiet, part of it's looking in new places, and the other is having an idea of what you're looking for. This is why the Buddha defined appropriate attention as attention to the proper questions. It's like looking for certain kinds of mushrooms in the forest. You can look and look and look in an area where there are lots of mushrooms, but you don't have the right image in your mind. You don't see them. But if you suddenly get the right image in mind, then you see them everywhere. So it's the same with the causes of suffering. They're all happening. Just realize that's what you're looking for. You want to look in the movements of the mind that are impelled by craving of various kinds. And you look in the areas where you find there's a, a sense of being oppressed or burdened by something in the mind. And how are you going to see that? Well, one of the clues is to look for inconstancy. And the Buddha says to hold the perception of inconstancy in mind. It's not simply to say, oh yeah, he's right, things are inconstant. Everybody knows that. There's change going on all the time. The point is in seeing where is there an inconstancy in the stress that you're feeling. And when you can detect that things go up or down with your little inconstancy meter. What else happened in the mind? What other movements were there? They're happening all the time, like the mushrooms in the leaves in the forest. They're hiding in among the leaves, and they're right there in plain sight. It's not like they're under the leaves, they're just mixed in with the leaves. But you have to have the right perception, the right idea of what you're looking for. And so when we look for inconstancy, this is what we're looking for, to see where there's the rise and fall and the level of stress, and so that we can detect what was the movement that caused the rise, what was the movement that caused the fall. Because we're not here to come to general conclusions about the nature of reality. We're here to look at why they're suffering, where it's coming from. So you want to look at the particulars. So when you learn how to develop the quality of your attention in this way, one, by making things very quiet, two, by looking in places where you haven't looked before, trying to find where your blind spots are and trying to figure out ways of looking into the blind spots, and then finally having some idea of what you're looking for. What is this that we're looking for inside? We're looking for the movement of intention, to see where it causes stress, to see what kind of intentions let go of stress. And so we follow that trail deeper and deeper into the mind until we find out what's really causing all the problems. That's how we find what we're looking for. It's what's a matter of the quality of your attention. This is why we practice concentration. This is why we pose questions in the mind to learn about the mind as it's entering concentration, because what else are you going to observe? You observe the mind in action right here, and that's where everything becomes plain.